clients are busy, professional women. They're working in successful careers, they're often raising families, they're helping care for elderly parents, they're volunteers in the community, and they're just busy, engaged, creative, smart women. Invariably, one of the first conversations we have is about self-care, and they say, huh? What's that? And then the next thing they say is, well, I don't have time, and I don't have the money for that, Elizabeth. So we have long conversations about what self-care really means and why it matters. And what we come to understand is that self-care is the foundation for being a successful human being, but certainly to be a successful businesswoman, a successful parent, a successful daughter, friend, caregiver, you know, all the different roles that we play. But so often we think of self-care as selfish. We think of it as a one-time decision that we're going to be making about, oh, should I go shopping for the day or should I go and get myself a massage? It's so much bigger than that. It's about the long-term decisions that we make to help ourselves be successful and those around us be successful too. Let me share a story with you from my personal life. Last year, my daughter was two and a half and she was ready to enter preschool. And we learned very quickly that it is very difficult to find your child a spot in preschool, almost like getting them into an Ivy League college. It's just, there are no spaces available. So I happened to get lucky one day. We'd been on a couple of waiting lists, but no dice. And I was on the playground with another mom who mentioned that her school had a spot available. So I called the school and they confirmed, yes, it was true. So I said, hold that right there. I'm coming with my money. 20 minutes. I'll be right there. So I drove up to the school really quickly and I handed them my money and I said, great, wonderful. We're set. So I called my husband on the way home triumphant. I said, yay, I found Riley a spot for preschool. I'm so excited. And he said, well, that's great, honey. And how much does it cost? I said, I don't know. And frankly, I don't care. And he said, what do you mean you don't care? That's an important part of the process. And for me, obviously, it wasn't. So we got home that night, and we started researching the school's website. We were looking at what are all the fees and costs and everything associated with going to preschool. And I have to admit, we had real sticker shock. It is expensive to send your child to preschool to learn how to play with crayons and Play-Doh and glitter and glue and run around on the playground. We had no idea. So. My husband decides that this information is not good enough for him. Well, I'm not sure. We need to research other schools. And I said, okay, honey. So he, in his engineering ways, went ahead and made a very detailed Excel spreadsheet list uh, showing you know, the, the hours and the costs and all the benefits of going to all the different programs in the area. But what he forgot was that there were no spaces available. It didn't matter because this was the only one that we could find in our area. So after much hemming and hawing from him, I finally said, honey, look, here's the deal. We're going to make the decision to put Riley in school next year. And if you really are against that, if you do not want to do that, if you do not think we should invest that money in her preschool education, I'm okay with that. I'll stay home with her for one more year, and then we're going to take those same thousands of dollars and invest them in me and my self-care. So I'll be going to regular yoga classes, getting weekly massages, and I'll probably be going to see a therapist because I'm gonna be going a little crazy with this very effervescent, bright, creative two and a half year old who is ready for social engagement. She's ready for someone beyond mama. I can't do it for her anymore. Needless to say, my husband acquiesced and the next morning we enrolled Riley in that preschool and I'm delighted to say that it has turned out to be a great fit for her and for us. So, you know, I share this story with you as a reminder that as you're thinking about self-care decisions for your family, it's so often not about one person, it's about the greater good. It's not about a short-term decision. It's about long-term planning. And it's really rarely ever about price. It's about value. So in our case, we were able to uh, end up with a win-win-win. It's a win for Riley. She's happy, creative, curious, talking a mile a minute these days, which is great. She's now three and a half. And it was a win for me because I'm happy that my daughter's happy, but I also was able to return to work after being a stay-at-home mom for a period of time. And my husband's happy because I'm happy. <laughs> and you know that old saying that if mama ain't happy, there's nobody who's happy. <laughs> So I would like to invite you to think about what smart self-care decisions do you need to be making for you and your family that will result in a win, win, win. Thanks.